All right, thanks for joining me again. Uh, let's talk about how San Jose beat St. Louis in Game 3 of this Round 3 playoff series, 5-4 to four in overtime, uh, with a little bit of controversy sprinkled in at the end as well. Um, San Jose now leads this, uh, this playoff series 2-1. to one. And before we jump into all the scoring and all the controversy, uh, let's talk about some notes uh, going into this game. Now, San Jose had um, eight goals from four players in this series against the Blues, and the Blues had seven goals from seven players in this series against the Sharks. Hurdle, Thomas Hurdle, has 13 points, but 12 of them are all at home. This one, of course, is being played in St. Louis. Carlson, Eric Carlson, in, in Game 2, he looked he was like he was really laboring with his skating, his pivoting, it looked to be a groin issue, and I suggested you know maybe they dial back his minutes, perhaps in the next game, or maybe even sits a game. Yeah, well I don't know what happened, but he looked much better in this one. Uh, what else here? Um, Tarasenko has obviously got to start pitching in more, and he does get a goal in this game. Um, Pietrangelo uh, has uh, 11 points in 15 games in this playoffs right now. Now, uh, San Jose's strength was supposed to be in their in their depth. And obviously, you know, with uh, eight goals from four players, that's a bit of a problem. So, DeBoer took a bit of a blender to his third and fourth lines. Um, Sorison is out for this game, and Haley came in. That's on the fourth. And... Yeah, and there's some. Uh, yeah, and Me Me Mecca Carl. I always get this hard time saying this name for some reason. Uh, Mecca Carlson um, was moved to the third line uh, with Joe Thornton. Evander Kane only has two goals so far in the playoffs, and he had 30 during the regular season. What's happening with him? He's hitting stuff from time to time, but he's he's not getting on the um, on the point board. San Jose only has three power play goals in its last nine games. Now, and they've had ten power play goals altogether, but only one of them have been on the road. Uh, and of course, Luke Shen. No, Luke Shen. That's, that's, he's playing in Vancouver. I'm talking about his brother, Brain Shen, who plays for the St. Louis Blues, who has no points in eight games. Until this one. I think he gets one. Yeah, he does. He gets eight points. In any case, um, let's 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 start with the scoreboard here. Eric Carlson gets on the board first. Now, the first five minutes of this game is all St. Louis Blues. They they're just hitting everything that moves. Um, I know I sound like a broken record when I do these uh, this the Sharks Blues reviews because that's normally what goes on, and you'll see that in, in the hit category. The Blues uh, double up the Sharks on the hit board, um, but then Carlson finally finds it. The net. He's had what 13 points in this in these playoffs right now. All assists, and he finally gets a goal. Um, a shot from the top of the circle. I almost said the skirt. Um, and he he puts it in over the shoulder of Bennington. Um, I thought Bennington had a, a a good look on this. He he might have wanted actually these first two goals. You think he might have wanted them back? They weren't bad goals, but and a goalie at his level, you think. Um, he would have got that. This is also Carlson's first goal since December 29th, I think, I want to say. So that's that's huge. I dropped something. Hold on. I'm back. Um, all right. And uh, then San Jose goes up 2-0 um, on a goal from Thornton. Thornton kind of took, um, I, I believe Couture stood up in the dressing room and said, hey, come on, guys, we need you know a bigger effort. We need more scoring for more people besides myself. And um, Thornton took that to heart because he gets um, on the board on it. I believe it was a kind of a loose puck in front. And this is another one, as I mentioned, Bennington probably should have had. Thornton gets his third of the playoffs, assisted by Vlasic and LeBanc. And San Jose, from the five-minute point on, just take over this game um, well into, I want to say, the second period, about halfway or, th or so through the second period. St. Louis Blues defenseman, Vince Dunn, I believe that's his first name, Dunn, gets hit with a puck. And he doesn't even see it coming. He's near the net. He, I think he's um, battling another Sharks player for position. And the puck hits him in the face. 
So he doesn't even brace himself for it at all. And he looked bad coming off the ice. It was really hard to watch. He literally, he, when he came through the bench door, he, it's like he just fell, literally just fell into the arms of the trainers. He looked really woozy. I think um, looked like maybe he might have broken his jaw or a fractured like an, an, an orbital bone or something. I don't think he's coming back um, for these playoffs. That's really bad news for the Blues. And that's also important because they play the rest of the game. And this happened, I want to say, halfway or so through the first. Um, the St. Louis goes through the rest of the game with only five defensemen. Now, the Blues come out strong in the second period. Steen gets his second of the playoffs, assisted by Barbashev. Barbashev does all the work on this play. It's kind of a two-on-one. He gets the puck uh, to Steen, and he's got a, an open net. Jones doesn't really have a chance, and it's now 2-1 for San Jose Sharks. Within not even, like, 10 seconds, less than 10 seconds later, Joe Thornton scores his second goal of the game. And the first time in the playoffs that Joe has uh, two goals in a game. That's his fourth of the playoffs, assisted by LeBanc and Dylan. Joe just happens to be in the right place and the right time to pick up the garbage and dump it in, and it's now a 3-1 game. So Sharks take back their two-goal lead. But then the game starts to go really crazy, really exciting. This is probably the most one of the most exciting periods I've seen in hockey so far in the playoffs, and it's just back and forth, and everyone's just getting chances. Um, the Sharks start to give away the puck a little more than they want to um, in the neutral zone and ha are just having troubles getting out of their own defensive end. St. Louis is just, you know, sort of suffocating them um, with hard, fast forechecking. I want to say about three minutes later, after Joe Thornton's second goal, Tarasenko, finally, there he is, gets on the board after a little bit of a hiatus from scoring. He gets his sixth of the playoffs, assisted by Shen and Perienko. And this was a laser um, from the uh, top of the left circle that gets Jones uh, on, the, on the glove side. I want to say, and this is just under the crossbar, it's kind of hard to blame this one on Jones. It was just a really nice shot. And you're like, Tarasenko, where was this? For, you know, for the last couple, you know, three, four, five games. Where was it? I don't know. Ask him. Shen did make a nice little play on this one just to get Tarasenko the puck. He could have just as easily turned it over because it went in, it went through a couple of players' sticks and to Tarasenko, who shot up the ice on that rush. Sh Shen's got a point too now. Yay! <laughs> he gets on the board, but I think that's it. <laughs> that's it for him. He really needs to... Um, you can see the, the efforts there, but I don't know. He's just snake bitten. Perienko, this is the and this is the first of a few assists. He he has like a, a three point game in this. He had a fantastic game as well. And then St. Louis just goes on this run. They 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 they're smothering San Jose at this point. Perron, the game is now tied. Perron gets his fourth of the season, assisted by Perienko and Edmondson, Edmund not Edmonton Edmondson, who I've seen stepping into a lot of plays lately. He almost looks like he's like a, a responsible and bigger, meaner version of Jake Gardner <laughs> from the Toronto Maple Leafs. He always plays really well. And there's Perienko again, who, who also gets his, his second assist of the game. Then Blues take the lead before the period is over. Just about a minute and a half or so left. Perron gets his uh, second goal of the night. It's the first time he scored two goals in the playoffs in one game as well. His fifth overall, that was on the power play. And that was a point shot by Perron that got past Jones. His goal was assisted by Maroon and Perienko. And there was a point in the second period where the St. Louis player, a defenseman, put the puck over the boards. It should have been a penalty for delay of game, but it wasn't called because they thought it hit a San Jose Shark. Of course, when they played the replay, it was clearly um, didn't come, didn't go anywhere near the San Jose player and went straight out. So St. Louis kind of got away with a penalty um, there, and as I'll show you later on, there was there was only two penalties called all game. So St. Louis kind of escapes it there, and, and that's sort of the point, the turning point. It wasn't because of that play necessarily, but um, it was from that point on where St. Louis really started to uh, suffocate San Jose. Let's move on to the third. This was mostly a St. Louis period as well. And what I was just about to say earlier on was Blay, the St. Louis player on the four check hits Braun 
uh, the defenseman of San Jose, he sort of catches him in the hard and the jaw, reaching for a puck on the play, and I think Blay might actually get a game suspension for that because he, had, I think he had plenty of time to not hit him in the face, and even though it was a reach and his head was lower to the ice, I still think it was avoidable. You might see him get a fine, and I was watching this on Sportsnet, and the the panel had the um, the same. Uh, they brought up the same point as well. Now we only have one goal in the, in the third period, and that's because this is in the last minute. With one minute left, San Jose pulls their goalie about two minutes in, um, and then there are no St. Louis defensemen near Bennington on this goal. None. The only guy who's back is uh, is O'Reilly, and both Couture and Pavelski have put up condos right in the blue paint in front of Bennington. And there's there's no St. Louis defenseman. Thornton has the puck. He's in the corner. He just throws the puck to the net. Um, Pavelski deflects it onto Bennington. O'Reilly tries to get to Couture, who gets to this loose puck before he does, and he puts it into the side. And it's a tie game. St. Louis really looked like they might pull this one off. In, in game two, I thought St. Louis was a bit lucky that they won that game and they just sort of survived the last half of the game where San Jose really came along and it sort of felt the opposite in this one it, it felt like San Jose, uh, San Jose got really lucky to you know to really win this game because they were sort of asleep for half of it St. Louis played a really hard checking possession game and the old San Jose luck comes into point especially Here's your controversy in overtime, where Timo Mir bats a puck out of the air, but he bats it into the ice, bounces off the ice to Pavelski, sorry, to Nyquist, who then passes the puck right to Carlson, who's sitting a little high in the slot and just squeezes it, shoots it and squeezes it past Bennington. Of course, St. Louis players are all furious, including Jordan Bennington, but the refs didn't see the hand pass. And the rules state that you can't review a hand pass. So the Sharks get away with this one on a goal that really shouldn't have been allowed. And uh, yeah, I know San Jose has gotten some pretty big calls go their way. Not a ton of them, but big ones. Um, of course, we all point to that one. On, on Pavelski's uh, on slash uh, against the Vegas Golden Knights that five minute um, that match penalty maybe you could look back into that uh, you know missed call against St. Louis during the second period that delay a game that was never called and you could look at that and say hey that was St. Louis got lucky on that call and they just got unlucky on this one that's another way to look at it either way I don't have too much invested in either team winning this. Yeah, I'd like to see Joe Thornton win a cup, but I'm fine with St. Louis going all the way too. They haven't, um, I mean, they're both sort of underdogs in my eyes. I'm blabbing. Let's get to the team stats. Faceoffs are 34 31 for St. Louis. Power play, the Blues go 1 for 1, the Sharks go 0 for 1. Hits are 43 to 21 for St. Louis. And yeah, we'll see if, if Braun, who got hit, that head hit, even comes. He maybe he looked concussed the rest of the game, like he was. He started to make some bad passes. He had some slow reactions. Um, yeah, giveaways were nine to seven. Blues in this one. Takeaways were thirteen to three for St. Louis. Block shots were twenty four to twenty for the Blues. Shots in the first period it was nine to four for San Jose. In the second it was thirteen to eight for St. Louis. In the third, each team had 12 apiece. In overtime, each team had three apiece. And the total shots in the game were 32-32. The goalies. Jones, of course, gets the win. Saves 28-32 with a .875 percentage. He's now 10-6 in the playoffs. He didn't look fantastic in this game, especially on the Perron goals. You can argue the Tarasenko goal was just an amazing one. And he had no chance on the Steen goal. But... He looked really good. He kept San Jose, he made some amazing saves in the third. He kept San Jose in this one. Because St. Louis also, after they pulled the goalie, um, I'm digressing a bit here. St. Louis iced the puck quite a few times. Um, there was a lot of icing going on. And they were trying to score, and they actually put it on the outside of the post. 
at one point. They came very close to scoring it and, and just closing out the game, but it didn't. Back to Jones. Not much more to say about him. Hey, Moose, stop. Moose. My cat's digging into the carpet. There's not a moose in my house. That's just his name. Back to goalies. Biddington gets the loss in this one. He saves 27 of 32 with a .844 save percentage. He's not now 9-7. and seven. Were any of these goals bad for him? Probably he wants back the first three San Jose goals, really. He seemed to be tracking the puck slow in the first half of the game. The three stars. The first star is Eric Carlson with two goals, plus two, 27-51 of ice time. The second star was Perron with two goals, two penalty minutes, plus one in 17.01 of ice time. Thornton gets the third with two goals, one assist. He's a plus three and has 16.23 of ice time. There was only two penalties called the entire game. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions about this. I'm sure you um, all want to vent about that hand pass. The NHL is probably going to have to do something that um, about that rule-wise. Um, in the off season, they have to because if something like this happens in the final, you know, a la Brett Hull's foot in the crease when Dallas won the cup way back when was it 1999, 2000? They've got to do something. Hit that like button if you like this video. Smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. And hey, if you happen to have any hockey geek friends, please don't feel shy about sharing. Thanks again. And I'll see you soon.